Ah, Prost! That's the German for cheers. Time for a party. Time to blow up the beer mugs. Blow up the beer mugs? Well, yes, yes, I'm afraid it's an inflatable beer tankard or stein. Extraordinary idea. It's got the Bavarian flag on it, so obviously it's used for perhaps the um, Munich Beer Festival, a famous one. And it's, when it's complete, it's quite a really quite a nice mug. It holds a good gallon, well, half a gallon, I don't know, of beer, and then you can drink away to your heart's content. Pack it up at the end and put it in your pocket and go home. What a lovely concept. So I started looking through my collection at another lot of extraordinary drinking vessels, and here's some of that to show. Some of the most inventive ideas too, quite extraordinary. I think one of the most sophisticated I've ever come across is this one made by a friend of mine, James Dalgetty, playing with mirrors and mirrors in mugs. So he's got a message up here saying, mirrors reverse images, as you know, and there's a mirror underneath there to reverse the image. Mirrors reverse image, and it's all in normal forward writing as well. Now, when I turn it upside down, no, round to the back, I'm now looking at the words at the bottom, but not words in mugs, and it appears quite normal in forward writing, not reverse writing. The odd thing is, when you turn the thing back again and look into the mirror, which is a little bit of platinum lustre, a very interesting effect, you see the words appearing forward in the normal way. Why haven't they reversed? Well, the answer is they have reversed, but the curving of the mirror re-reverses it. Extraordinary idea, something you never notice normally because all mirrors are flat and you couldn't do it. You have to have a curved mirror to get the effect. Very interesting. It's quite scientific too, so something else to enjoy when you're having a mug or something, enjoying it. Here's a, a much simpler one, which is a, very elegant really, and I got this oh, many years ago. It's, um, it's got one with a little spirit level in it to show when you've probably had too many to drink, when you can't get that level, it means you're, you're, you're fairly well drunk and you're not able to stand on your feet very steadily. So stop for a minute, look carefully at the little bubble, if it's in the middle, you're still sober and it's safe enough. So a lovely little way of testing <laughs> for alcoholic content that's gone to the brain. Very sweet, very neat. Quite a few years ago too. This is something simple I picked up in the tourist shop in, in Amsterdam. It's quite a nice little mug too. What's, what's nice about it for kids is these pits slide, so all the scenes you have around Holland, which is a very photogenic country I think, can be um, admired, providing you set it up right. So here's, a big, here's the end of the word Holland, so we head it up like this. And we put this one here around like that. Oh yes, it's coming together nicely. And the last piece we come up there, and there we are, we've got the word Holland. And then you can look at the rest of the pictures and enjoy the scene. Except you've got to do it all on the vertical, otherwise you'll spill the drink. Or perhaps you can play with it after you've had the drink, I don't know. But it's a, a very nice little tourist item. That's, I think it's, that's, that's a neat one. This is a very recent one, uh, which a friend of mine from California made after the work of Sukihara, whose stuff I admire very much. It's a 3D printed version of, uh, of this famous optical illusion, which occurs when you turn it round from here to here, it changes from a round mug to a square mug. There's a square mug for you, and it's a round mug to me. Now I turn it around 180 degrees, and suddenly it becomes a little bit easier to use. I don't think I like drinking mugs with a square edge, although I'm going to show one later on which is, but that is a lovely transformation from a round mug to a square box-like mug, all done with 3D printing, and after the work of Professor Sukihara. Nice one, I think. I've got one or two ones which um, do things when you lift them up. Here's one, for instance. Give me a yodel, it says. It's a Switzerland, it's a Swiss novelty. So when you're going to drink someone, you go that. Uh, of course. Yes, it's got a little light sensitive diode at the bottom and a battery inside and it does it each time you lift it up. Nice one. Woo! Let it finish. <laughs> I love it. Here's a very early one, an extraordinary mug, all battered and things, but made like that. And it apologises and says, well, you've got to understand, nobody's perfect. That's a nice one, isn't it? To put on your shelf as a, as a novelty, especially if you're working in a shop that's making, uh, selling ceramic things. as a little gift item. It's meant to be a little bit of a joke, to say the least. Here's another one which is noisy, but great fun. 
it's got a little chip inside it. When you lift it up, it plays a love story theme, and it's quite a sweet one. Again, it's got a little battery inside and a little light center diode, and does a very nice little bit of music. Put it down and it shuts up again. So there's plenty of those around. This is something I've never used, but sometime I've got to try it out, I suppose. It's a slush. Folks think you're making slush, slush mugs. You have to put that in the fridge, and this special liquid here gets very, very cold. When you put the drink you want to drink in, into it, it chills it quite, really quite strongly. And you need to have it in a thing like this, otherwise your hand's going to get cold and you lift it up. But when it's been left there for a few minutes and perhaps stirred, it'll be a nice chilled drink of whatever it is you, you wanted to drink in it. So a slush mug, all made out and ready for the customer to use. Nice, nice concept there. This is something Long Train and Broxton made back in the 1980s. The mine had dried out actually, but I had great fun refilling it with some, with some water. And it's just, it's got a liquid, it's got a liquid um, jacket around it. Two layers, and these little things float in it, which is very sweet. When it dried out, I drilled a little hole there and got a hypothermic syringe and filled it up again. And it's just about re-established with a few bubbles, never mind those. But it's nice to have a party drink which does something a little bit active when you're actually holding it like that, because those things will float around. And very pretty as well, too. I think Long Crane do, have done some very nice stuff in the past, and still do for that matter. Here's a wonderful, famous film star, or picture that I've read all the books and everything else. It's, what's nice about this is lenticular, when I hold it vertically and turn it round and round, you get all the effects of the various characters in this story appearing and disappearing and transforming. So this is quite unusual for me because it's a lenticular effect, but it's on a curved cylindrical surface. Tapering cylindrical make it even more advanced. But nice lenticulation when you move it back and forward. And for kids who are drinking and enjoying this and are great fans of these books, I think that makes a very, very nice gift for them. Hmm. Here's something which is quite fun. It's a, 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 it's a metal mug, and you've got little magnetic mag, uh, magnetic alphabet on it. I managed to get our company into grand illusions, but these pieces all slide around, and this you just set them up and make a little message to appear there, and drink and enjoy it. So the kids can have great fun making up messages with this as an idea. It's it's very sweet that, and, and it, it works very well. It, it looks elegant when it's finished, I think. Another slightly crazy one, because this, when I first saw it, I thought it was a, a, an ordinary plastic mug which had been a bit battered by someone squeezing it. But no, no, I'm afraid this is, it's, it's porcelain. <laughs> Would you believe? It's porcelain. It's been specially made to, to make it look a little bit like a battered one. Yes, I do like things which are apparently something else. This is a very nice idea because it's um, a sliding block puzzle which kids can enjoy. They can move these pieces round up and down. They slide up and down, you can get them really bottled up and then spend some time solving it. It's probably best to finish the drink first and then you can lay it down and get busy and try and solve the old 15 puzzle, they used to call it. But the whole thing gets completely bottled up and you've got to get back to that nice picture at the end when, it, when, it's, uh, when it's finished. Nice one, that. Here's a very unusual one, Swedish shot glasses. These, would you believe, are made of jelly. Look, it squeezes, it moves. Extraordinary. Made of a thick, thick jelly. You put the fluid into it, drink the contents, and then you can eat the vessel. What about that? We did sell this in the very early days of Grand Illusions when we first opened the shop. I managed to get some. We sold them with different flavours to them as well. I don't think I ever used one, I have to say, but there we are. There's two different, slightly different colours. And they're the last ones left, and since the jellies are about 30 years old, 20 years old, well, I'm not sure I'd use them now, but they're fun to look at and to keep and remember early days. And there's a lovely anamorphic one here. This is a beer mat with a rather odd message on it, which is not easy to read. <laughs> well, the reason is it's anamorphic writing, and you have to have what's called a cylindrical anamorphic uh, surface to, to read it. This is a, a, a nice glass. It's got a nice bit of reflective material in it, place it on there, and now in the reflection you can read the word cheers. Yes, quite right too. Cheers it is. Good idea for reflections. And the last set really is uh, like a subset of showing this wonderful thing which is very well known. We have this in the shop from time to time. It's called the um, 
Ooh, the Greedy Cup for the Not Too Much Cub for the... All, all sorts of funny names for this one. This is the one from Samos, I think, in Greece, where it um, displays a little trick on the person who asks for too much liquid in it. Let me just show you what it does first, because these are all the same idea, but some of them are made of very different materials. And the last one I'll show shows exactly what's going on, which is very nice. So this is the first one. The point is, if I put a little bit of wine in there, well, it's not actually wine, it's a... No, it's okay. I can drink. Yes, it's actually blackcurrant juice. That's very nice. But if I'm a bit greedy and ask for a bit more, fill it up, fill it up, fill it up, you reach the point at which something awful happens. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. It's formed a siphon and made a bit of a mess on the surface. We'll do that at the end. So that's what happens. There's a little passageway inside which comes up to the top of this protuberance, goes down again and forms a partial vacuum and it does a sort of self-siphoning action. Now the interesting thing is there's quite a number of different versions of this. That's one for instance and another one very much like it is this one here from a Japanese company. Again a little bit there, no harm, no trouble at all, but if you put a bit too much of liquid in it, disaster strikes. And a bit more. I'll put it on here actually and then it'll go back to the surface. There we are. What's nice about it is, or what's, for the guests it's not very nice, it, it all empties almost completely. There's just a little bit left at the end. So that's siphoning out again because the guest has been too greedy and said more, more, more. You shouldn't have more because it's, it can stuck on you. Now here's two other very unusual versions. Well, I'll come to the first one via this. This is a it's called a sake cup. I used this when I was in Japan once. They, it's, it's quite typical in Japan. You put some, it's, it's all very clean and hygienic inside. You put some sake in it and then you drink it. It's a bit awkward. And I've known that about that for some years. And this one, in fact, I picked up in Japan in 86. But only a year ago, Professor Katani gave me this version, which looks the same. But it's a lot cleverer because it's one of these ones which self-siphons. There's a little hole in the bottom corner there. That's a telltale sign. And then outside there's a bigger hole there. So the passage goes in there, goes upside, inside this panel of wood, down there and out again. So goodness me, this is going to happen again, I'm afraid. Let's put a bit in here. Up to there, so far so good. Quite dry, I can drink from it. Let me just try drinking from sake. It's a bit... It's getting awkward. It's just starting to come out as well. A bit more. Now we're going to get a siphoning action. Yes, it's going to siphon and siphon until the whole lot's done. So to do it on a wooden vessel like that is very, very unusual. Then the last one I'm going to show is in clear glass, so you can see exactly how the siphon is working. I'll cut that off and hurry it up a bit. So those are all the same idea. And here is the Genymore, the one I really like, because this shows exactly what's going on. You can see what's happening here. There's a little hole at the bottom where the liquid can rise up there, come out here, around there, and spill out. And it has to form, the liquid has to reach that height there. If you stop there, it's fine. There's fine, but just above it, it starts forming a siphon. Well, you'll see the effect when I pour some of this in here. And just for a bit of fun, I'll make a good mess on the table too. So, a little bit of this, it's fine, yes. Yeah, so I'll have a quick drink, cheers. Mm. More, more, I want more. More, 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 and some more, and... Oh dear. Yes, I'm afraid so. All over the host's table. What about that? How nasty for them. So it's pouring around the side, and you'll see it, it's rising up that tube now against gravity, but it's being pushed, the atmosphere is pushing it down because there's a partial vacuum all the way around here, which is pulling up more liquid. And to the great consternation of the guest, and the ho ho horror struck reaction of the host is making an awful mess on their table. Goodness me. The tricks people play to unsuspecting guests. That's a particularly clever one because it's, it's still relatively unknown. And you see it's going to go on to the very end. There's nothing to stop it. Well, you could put your finger over I suppose or tip it over or gulp the contents down very quickly. So lots and lots of ingenuity, particularly in this vessel. I love the different varieties of it. And there's so many people um, getting this stuff. I feel like, like starting a society for mug collectors like myself. <laughs> Are you a mug collector? You should try. Have a look.